I got pregnant, everything changed. My life flipped upside down in, in my work environment. I was, you know, in this law enforcement environment, wearing a suit every day as a civilian, climbing up. And at home, I was not healthy at all. I thought I was going crazy, actually. Mm. <laughs> and, um, and I remember after I gave birth to my daughter, um, just feeling so trapped, so um, just confined and at home and just excelling in all these other areas. Right. So I was the one my friends came to to talk to when they had a problem, but it really couldn't reciprocate it because of that perfection bubble I was living in. Mm. Um, and so I accepted a lot of things in my home life that I cringe at right now. I accepted someone treating me very, very poorly. Yeah. And I accepted them doing that behind closed doors where no one else could see. And, yeah. um, and I would show up at work where he, my role at work was analytics. So I would read rape reports and domestic violence reports of broken bones and, you know, babies getting abused and, you know, houses getting broken into. And I, I really kind of desensitized myself a little bit to what was going on in my own world because it wasn't oh, wow. that bad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so eventually, you know, eventually I had the courage to leave this, this person. Mm -hmm. It's one of the hardest things I ever did in my life. Uh, yeah. had the courage to leave this person and fled to another state, um, restraining order in hand. And, um, you know, and, and we really struggled, me and my girls really struggled for a long time or me really struggled mm -hmm. for a long time on the inside, on the outside, everyone still thought, Right. I was perfect. They're just like, oh my gosh, you're, you know, teaching all over the country and you're, you know, working for this police agency and you're executing this and executing that. And I was, mm -hmm. but inside I wasn't inside. I was right. lonely inside. I was torn inside. I was afraid inside yeah. of all these things that nobody saw on the outside. Mm -hmm. And I liked it that way. <laughs> right. So I have a question. Yes. Um, I know that you mentioned that you had this kind of barrier up. You, you said it was your perfection bubble. And I know that that was to not let out what you felt like you were having to hide in your home life. But do you think that that also um, prevented you from being able to let in any kind of help, you know, from your own circle? Yeah. Did you think about that? So, um, at the time I didn't, at the mm -hmm. time I didn't, at the time I thought, no, you're in control. You have gone through teen pregnancy. You have gone through all these things. You have control. Right. And, and that's what I really thought. I thought that if anyone knew what was really going on, they wouldn't think as highly of me, or they mm -hmm. wouldn't consider wow. my professionalism as professional. Right. And so I really didn't make that connection until one day, um, uh, things got pretty, pretty bad. And I called a friend of mine, Jennifer at 10 o'clock at night. Now, nothing happens in my world at 10 o'clock at night. Uh -huh. <laughs> so she knew something was wrong and she didn't ask any questions. She showed up with her husband and a moving crew. And I was out there the next day. Wow. And I think back when I think back, Alicia, when I think back about, you know, if I would have given someone the opportunity they would have helped me in the way that I needed to and not thought less of me the way that I thought. Right. So I'm thankful for my friend, Jennifer, and all the other people who, you know, within a week, all my friends knew, like a handful, right. five people knew, and they were all there for me in a way that I never imagined that I wanted or needed, but I needed and wanted both of those. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. I, I, I'm thankful for them as well. I'm thankful that um you know you were able to get that tribe that you needed right when you needed it um what do you say to other women who are where you were or maybe have not even come to grips with the fact that they might be right now where you were previously because you said you kind of blocked out um the reality of what you were dealing with you came you became desensitized to it yes. so how do you connect to now Don now and her money, power, and respect. Mm -hmm. um, how do you get from that place to where you are now? What was the progression and evolution of your um, journey? 
the number one thing was looking in the mirror and asking myself, is this what I want? Is this Mm. what I want? Not, is this what I deserve? Because for some reason, my mind was a little messed up and I thought I deserved what I had. Yeah, that's the narcissism, right? (laughs) That's the the, um, effects of narcissistic abuse is to make you feel like you're the problem and you are the one that needs to change. I really did. I really, really did. And I feel like the question I needed to really ask myself was, is this what Dawn wants? Is this what Dawn wants six months from now, six years from now? And, and the answer was no, the answer was no. And then the second question, you know, I wish I, I I would love to ask myself, my old self would Mm -hmm. be, you know, who are the people in your life who love you, um, who you trust um, or maybe that you don't even know, but you know that they're a resource for you right. who can lift you out. And there are hundreds and thousands of people who do this, like right. this organization, like our team, like so many people. And so um, letting folks know that there are so many resources, you know, and, and I will say, you know, working in law enforcement and, and seeing a lot of the domestic abuse that mm-hmm. occurred um, you know, and seeing shelters and things like, I didn't want anything to do with that. I didn't want, right. anything. and then, and you, those are good. Those are good mm-hmm. for some people. Right. And, and many, and they've helped many, many people. Right. And there's other things that help people too. You know, there's groups like yours, um, you know, this organization, there's groups that help people piece together the things that need to be pieced together. And so I think I would have told my, I tell myself, um, you have resources, and right. you don't even know it. You have resources mm-hmm. of people who care about you and you don't even know it. Yeah, I think that's that's good to focus on because um, what helped you get to that realization was you stopped and you got enough outside of the moment to be able to ground for a minute and ask yourself some questions. And so much of the time, I feel like, um, especially we as women, we have this defense mechanism where we can just keep going and going. And especially a mother, or someone in any kind of caretaker role, you get wrapped up in the everyday tasks and you never stop to sit with your own thoughts and ask yourself, is this what I want? What resources do I have? You know, so the the fact that those questions helped you to get out of that spin, I think is very telling and very helpful and hopefully resonates with our audience as well because you can stop and ask yourself those questions right now and get started, you know, in a new direction Um, if that's what you feel led to do. So I think that's a powerful reminder. Yeah. And where you, where I was 10 years ago Mm -hmm. is completely different from where I am today. And even though I was successful in all of those things, I wasn't in my reflection in the mirror. Right. Right. And so So talk to us a little bit about that. What, what is Don like on the inside today? Like what is the difference and how different does it feel? Well, it feels amazing. I will tell you, it feels amazing, but it didn't start off that way. Mm -hmm. It started off very, uh, I questioned if I was making the right decisions. And and so I would tell my old self, remember, you're you're going to question yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And and it was hard to really get out of that mindset, but that that release from that mindset was really, really, really key. Mm -hmm. And now life is amazing. I have um, really gone against the traditional forms of, um, employment, of motherhood, um, Mm -hmm. of all of it and found solutions that I never even knew existed. And so now I run my own company, um, where we have a team of people who support people in the social service sector who are looking to really have that work-life integration that, you know, amazing career stuff that we know is possible Mm -hmm. with that amazing home life that we also know is possible. And I feel like a lot of folks in the social service environment, you know, the um, sworn or civilian, uh, men and women, fire, law enforcement, EMS, you know, we have these like, you know, vests that we wear on and we have to be strong. And yes, you are strong. Uh, and, And I was strong when I was bringing myself out of, out of that. Mm-hmm. Now my life is wonderful. It, it is abundant. There's no more scarcity. There's That's no awesome. more scarcity mindset. Um, our business is a successful six figure business, which I never even thought was possible right. when I was 10 years ago. I never even thought it was possible. 
And Alicia, I do exactly what I want to do. I love uh, the work that I do. And I believe that I was freed up emotionally and mentally to really deliver excellence to our clients um, because, because we decided. 